Good evening and welcome. It's Monday the 21st of March and this is Evening Prayer. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Hear our voice, O Lord, according to your faithful love. According to your judgment, give us life. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be glory and praise for ever. In the darkness of our sin you have shone in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Open our eyes to acknowledge your presence, that freed from the misery of sin and shame, we may grow into your likeness from glory to glory. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. That this evening may be holy, good and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. Psalm 11 I run to the Lord for safety, so how can you say to me, fly away like a bird to your mountain? Look, evil people are bending their bows, they are placing their arrows against the strings, they are planning to shoot from the shadows at those who have honest hearts. When law and order are being destroyed, what can godly people do? The Lord is in his holy temple. The Lord is on his throne in heaven. He watches everyone on earth. His eyes study them. The Lord watches over those who do what is right, but he really hates sinful people and those who love to hurt others. He will pour out flaming coals and burning sulphur on those who do what is wrong. A hot and dry wind will destroy them. The Lord always does what is right, so he loves it when people do what is fair. Those who are honest will enjoy his blessing. Psalm 17 hear, Lord, hear me, because I ask for what is right. Listen to my cry for help. Hear my prayer. It doesn't come from lips that tell lies. When you hand down your sentence, may it be in my favour. May your eyes see what is right. Look deep down into my heart. Study me carefully at night and test me. You won't find anything wrong. I've planned nothing evil. My mouth has not said sinful things. Though evil people try to pay me to do wrong, I have not done what they wanted. Sorry. Instead, I have done what you commanded. My steps have stayed on your paths. My feet have not slipped. My God, I call out to you because you will answer me. Listen to me. Hear my prayer. Show me the wonders of your great love. By using your great power, you save those who go to you for safety from their enemies. Take good care of me, just as you would take care of your own eyes. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Keep me from, save me from the sinful people who want to destroy me. Save me from my deadly enemies who are all around me. They make their hearts hard and stubborn. Their mouths speak with pride. They have tracked me down. They are all around me. Their eyes watch for a chance to throw me to the ground. They're like a hungry lion waiting to attack. They're like a powerful lion hiding in the bushes. Lord, rise up. Oppose them and bring them down. With your sword, save me from those evil people. Lord, by your power, save me from people like that. They belong to this world. They get their reward in this life. May what you have stored up for evil people fill their bellies. May their children's stomachs be filled with it, and may they be even leftovers for their little ones. You will show that I am right. I will enjoy your blessing. When I wake up, I will be satisfied, because I will see you. 
Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 11 verses 1 to 17 A message from the Lord came to Jeremiah. The Lord said, Listen to the terms of the covenant I made with my people of long ago. Tell Judah the terms still apply to them. Tell those who live in Jerusalem that they must obey them too. I am the Lord, the God of Israel, so let the people know what I want them to do. Here is what I want you to tell them. May the person who does not obey the terms of the covenant be under my curse. I gave those terms to your people of long ago. That was when I brought them out of Egypt. I saved them out of that furnace that melts down iron and makes it pure. I said, obey me, do everything I command you to do. Then you will be my people and I will be your God. I raised my hand and I made a promise to your people of long ago. I promised them that I would give them a land that had plenty of milk and honey. It's the land you own today. I kept my promise. I replied, Amen, Lord. The Lord said to me, Here is what I want you to announce in the towns of Judah. Say it also in the streets of Jerusalem. Tell the people, Listen to the terms of my covenant. Obey them. Long ago I brought your people up from Egypt. From that time until today I warned them again and again. I said, Obey me, but they did not listen. They did not pay attention to me. Instead, they did what their stubborn, stubborn and evil hearts wanted them to do. So I brought down on them all the curses of the covenant. I commanded them to obey it, but they refused. The Lord continued, The people of Judah have made some evil plans. So have those who live in Jerusalem. All of them have returned to the sins of their people of long ago. Those people refused to listen to what I told them. And now the people of Israel and Judah alike have worshipped other gods and served them. They have broken the covenant I made with their people who lived before them. So I say, I will bring trouble on them. They will not be able to escape it. They will cry out to me, but I will not listen to them. The people of Jerusalem and of the towns of Judah will cry out. They will cry out to the gods they burn incense to. But those gods will not help them at all when trouble strikes them. Judah, you have as many gods as you have towns. And in Jerusalem, you have set up as many altars as there are streets. You are burning incense to that shameful god named Baal. Jeremiah, do not pray for these people. Do not make any appeal or request for them. They will call out to me when they are in trouble, but I will not listen to them. I love the people of Judah, but they are working out their evil plans along with many others. So what are they doing in my temple? Can meat that is offered to me keep me from punishing you? When you do evil things, you get a lot of pleasure from them. People of Judah, the Lord once called you a healthy olive tree. He thought its fruit was beautiful, but now he will come with the roar of a mighty storm. He will set the tree on fire and its branches will be broken. The Lord who rules over all planted you, but now he has ordered your enemies to destroy you. The people of Israel and Judah have both done what is evil. They have made the Lord very angry by burning incense to Baal. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. Christ suffered for you, leaving you as an example that you should follow in his steps. He committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. When he was reviled, he did not revile in turn. When he suffered, he did not threaten but he trusted himself to God, who judges justly. Christ himself bore our sins in his body, on the tree, that we might die to sin 
and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strain like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be for ever. Amen. Christ committed no sin, no guile was found on his lips. John chapter 7 verses 37 to 52 It was the last and most important day of the feast. Jesus stood up and spoke in a loud voice. He said, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Does anyone believe in me? Then just as scripture says, rivers of living water will flow from inside them. When he said this, he meant the Holy Spirit. Those who believed in Jesus would receive the Spirit later. Up to that time, the Spirit had not been given. This was because Jesus had not yet received glory. The people heard his words. Some of them said, this man must be the prophet we've been expected. Others said, he is the Messiah. Still others asked, how can the Messiah come from Galilee? Doesn't scripture say that the Messiah will come from the family line of David? Doesn't it say that he will come from Bethlehem, the town where David lived? So people did not agree about who Jesus was. Some wanted to arrest him, but no one laid a hand on him. Finally, the temple guards went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees. They asked the guards, why didn't you bring him in? No one ever spoke the way this man does, the guards replied. You mean he's fooled you also, the Pharisees asked. Have any of the rulers or Pharisees believed in him? No, but this mob knows nothing about the law. There's a curse on them. Then Nicodemus, a Pharisee, spoke. He was the one who had gone to Jesus earlier. He asked, Does our law find a man guilty without hearing him first? Doesn't it want to, want to find out what he is saying and doing? They replied, Are you from Galilee too? Look into it. You will find that a prophet does not come out of Galilee. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Be not far from me, O my God. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Forsake me not, O Lord, be not far from me, O my God. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way, rejoice with God now and for ever. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham, and his children for ever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Those who gave up their lives for Christ and followed in the way, rejoice with God, now and forever. Father, we, as we thank you for today and for all that today has been, we thank you for the example of Thomas Cramner, a man who did not shy away, 
from standing up for his faith. A man who was convinced that reform in the church was needed. Lord, we thank you for his example and for the example of others who have gone before us, who have stood up for truth and righteousness, even in the face of opposition, even in the face of opposition from within the church. And as we reflect on the reading today, how church leaders opposed your son and refused to listen to him, we hear the words of Jeremiah when you speak your judgment against Judah and Jerusalem because they also refuse to listen. It's a pattern throughout history, Lord, that people refuse you, that people turn away from you, that even your church refuses to listen. Father, in these days we pray that your church would open its ears and open its heart, would work for peace and justice, for reconciliation of peoples, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for peace today. As we continue to see the atrocities in Ukraine, as the bombing continues to rain down on residential areas and civilians, Lord, as the rhetoric circulates and as claim and counterclaim is made, as fingers are pointed, we lift our eyes to you. You know the hearts of men, of all men, of all people. You know the intentions, the motivation. Lord, we pray that you would judge, not just in the future, but you would judge now those who are intent upon war and destruction, and the taking of innocent lives. Father, we pray for protection for those who are caught up in the conflict, for those civilians still living in those areas, in those cities that are under siege and under bombardment. Lord, we pray that the aggressor would be thwarted turned back, undermined, that the truth would surface in Russia, in the Russian media, that the attempts to tell a different story would be undone. 
that the people there would call on their government to end this war. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, as the US government has, has sifted and looked at evidence pointing to clear intent to destroy the Rohingya minority in Myanmar, Lord, we pray for that people. We pray for all who find themselves on the wrong end of genocide. We pray that all peoples would be allowed to live in peace. to celebrate their own culture without fear and without repercussion and reprisal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Fathers, we pray for those who have asked for our prayer or who have come to our attention as those needing prayer. We thank you that you call us to stand in the gap, to bring our concerns to you for the sake of others that you listen and that you act so Lord we pray for those we know who are ill today we pray for John's brother Derek after his stroke for Sue Shakespeare as she recovers from stroke We pray for Pat Treadwell, June Cottrell, June Hawley, Margaret and others we may know who are having treatment for cancer. For those who walk alongside them in that journey and care for them and fear for them. Lord, for your comfort, for your healing, for your strength. We pray for those who are suffering the effects of COVID, for Rosemary, for Emma, for Leah and Kev, we thank you that Maureen has a negative test now, a positive test, sorry, no, negative test, she's no longer positive. We pray for the tiredness that all often hangs around after this virus has gone. Lord, we pray for those whose bodies have been changed by other viruses, other viral illnesses that have left them with chronic fatigue, fibromyalgia and other such illnesses. Lord, we pray for the strength, the wisdom to be able to live comfortably. Pray for Marianne, for Karen and Sheila. We 
Lord, we pray for those who are grieving tonight. For Claire on the loss of her mum, Joyce. For Andy as he supports her. For the rest of the family, Lord. We pray that they may know your comfort and your strength at this time. Father, we pray for all those that we know, all those that we carry with us, all those whose lives are in turmoil or who are struggling. That they would find all their needs met in you. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Father of all mercies, who through the work of your servant Thomas Cramner renewed the worship of your church and through his death revealed your strength in human weakness, by your grace strengthen us to worship you in spirit and in truth and so to come to the joys of your everlasting kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our mediator and advocate, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. Trusting in the compassion of God, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May God, our Redeemer, show us compassion and love. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining me this evening. Hope you have a pleasant rest of the evening and a good week to come. Take care.